Hi, this is George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and this is part one of a five-part final exam review for my intermediate algebra class. In this review, we'll go over absolute value, equations, and inequalities, as well as working with radicals. Let's begin with the first problem. This is problem three from the review. We're asked to solve an absolute value equation. The goal with solving an absolute value equation is to isolate the absolute value first, then break it into two equivalent equations. To isolate this absolute value, we're going to begin by subtracting 7 on both sides. So 2 times the absolute value of 5x minus 3 is equal to 14. Uh, if we divide both sides by 2, we have the absolute value of 5x minus 3 equals 7. In order for a number to have an absolute value of 7, that number must be 7 or negative 7. So we'll break this into two equations. 5x minus 3 equals 7. And the second equation will be 5x minus 3 equals negative 7. To solve both of these equations, add 3 to both sides and divide by 5. Adding 3 gives us 5x equals 10. Dividing by 5, x equals 2. If we add 3 to both sides of the second equation, negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Divide by 5, and we get x equals negative 4 fifths. So our solution set is negative 4 fifths and 2. Here we have an absolute value inequality, and we want to take note that we're going to have an absolute value less than a positive number. That's the type of absolute value inequality we trap. Uh, just as with the equations, we do need to isolate the absolute value first, so I'll subtract 5 from both sides. Absolute value of 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to 9 minus 5 is 4. Okay, now we can uh, trap this expression, 3x minus 1, between negative 4 and positive 4. If it has an absolute value that's less than or equal to 4, then it's either a positive number that's less than 4, 0, or a negative number that's greater than 4. And we can tie those all together with this inequality. To solve this inequality, we want to isolate x in the interior branch. So we'll add 1 to all three pieces. Negative 3 less than or equal to 3x less than or equal to 5. Uh, divide through by 3. And we have negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5 thirds. On a number line, A negative 1 is on the left side. We're going to put a closed circle there. 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds, so that'll be a little before 2. I'm sorry about that. And we shade between those two values. In interval notation, that's bracket negative 1, comma, 5 thirds and bracket. We use bracket when we have an endpoint that's included in the solution set. On to an absolute value inequality involving the greater than symbol. In this case, we're going to break up the absolute value into two separate inequalities. Either the expression inside the absolute values is greater than 1, or it's less than negative 1. We'll solve both of these inequalities by adding 4 to both sides. Adding 4 in the first inequality gives us x greater than 5. Adding 4 in the second gives us x is less than 3. On a number line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, x greater than 5, open circle at 5, shade to the right x less than 3, open circle at 3, shade to the left. In interval notation, the first interval begins, uh, we write negative infinity, comma 3, we use parentheses because 3 is not included, u for union, 
and the second interval is 5 comma infinity. Now we move on to the radicals. Uh, to simplify a radical expression, we want to begin by factoring the coefficient 180. And 180, if you use a factor tree, is 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. So let me rewrite this radical. 2 squared times 3 squared times 5, x to the 25th, y to the 21st. For every, uh, since this is a square root, for every group of two factors inside, we get to remove that as one factor on the outside. 2 squared will become a 2 on the outside. Uh, the, the factor 2 will not remain inside the square root. Same for 3. But the 5, since there's only use as a factor once, that stays inside the square root. For x to the 25th, we want to divide 2 into 25. It goes 12 times with a remainder of 1. That tells us that we're going to get an x to the 12th outside and an x to the 1st will remain on the inside. If you do the same thing for, the, uh, for y, 2 goes into 21 10 times, so that's going to be y to the 10th with a remainder of 1 that leaves y on the inside. If your index had been 3 for a cube root, you divide by 3. If it had been a fourth root, you divide by 4, and so on. Just to clean this up, 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6, x to the 12th, y to the 10th, times the square root of 5xy. In order to add or subtract radical expressions, they have to have the same radical. They have to be like radicals. Now, the square root of 48 and the square root of 3 are not the same. But if we factor 48, 48 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. For square roots, I can take out 2 times 2 and be left with a 3 on the inside. So we'll begin by removing the 4 from the square root and leaving the 3 inside. We now notice that the two radicals are like radicals. We're going to be able to combine those. 8 square root of 3 plus 5 square root of 3 adds to be 13 square root of 3. Just like we were adding 8x plus 5x. Combine the coefficients, leave the radical the same. Here we're going to multiply two radical expressions. This is FOIL type multiplication. I'll begin by multiplying 5 square root of 3 times 7 square root of 3. 5 times 7 is 35. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. Anytime you multiply a square root by itself, and that number is a positive number inside the square root, it equals the number, uh, the radicand, if you will. Second multiplication. 5 square root of 3 times negative 6 square root of 2. 5 times negative 6 is minus 30. Since these square roots are not the same, we're going to multiply the radicands. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 square root of 2 times 7 square root of 3 plus 28. 4 times 7. Square root of 6, 2 times 3. And our last multiplication, 4 square root of 2 times negative 6 square root of 2. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24, and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is simply 2. To simplify this, 35 times 3 is 105. I can combine these two like radicals. Negative 30 plus 28 is minus 2 square root 6, and 24 times 2 is 48, so I'll write minus 48. Finally, I've got two more like terms to combine. 105 minus 48 is 57, so we're left with 57 minus 2 square root 6. Here we have a denominator that has a radical in it, and we're going to go ahead and rationalize this denominator. When your denominator has two terms, we do that by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator in the numerator and the denominator. Okay. Multiplying in the numerator is distributive property. 8 square root of 2 times 4 is 32 square root 2. And 8 square root 2 times square root 6, 
that's going to be plus 8 square root 12. We're going to have to come back and simplify that in a moment. In the denominator, whenever we multiply conjugates, first times first, last times last. 4 times 4 is 16, minus square root 6 times square root 6 is 6. Okay, a little simplifying to do, as I mentioned. 12 we can think of as 4 times 3, and we know the square root of 4 is 2, so I can get a 2 out of that square root. 32 square root 2 plus 16 square root 3, all divided by 16 minus 6 is 10. I can reduce this fraction by dividing out a common factor of 2 from these three numbers. Basically, you could factor a 2 out of the numerator and reduce it with the 10 in the denominator. Dividing out the 2, I get 16 square root 2 plus 8 square root 3, all divided by 5. Let's move on and try a radical equation. Um, to solve the radical equation, you want to isolate the radical first, which we have here. The square root is alone on the left-hand side. Then you want to remove that radical by raising both sides to the appropriate power. With a square root, we're going to raise both sides to the second power. If it had been a cube root, we'd raise it to the third power, and so on. When we square a square root, we're going to be left with 3x plus 10. And the right side is simply x squared. Now we gather all the terms on the right side. Because we this equation is quadratic, we want to set everything equal to 0. Um, this quadratic expression factors to be x minus 5 times x plus 2. Remember the 5 second rule. If you can't factor this within 5 seconds, move on to the quadratic formula. You'll get the same solutions. Our potential solutions are going to be x equals 5 from the first factor and x equals negative 2 from the second. We do want to go back and check our solutions in the original equation. If I check 5, I have the square root of 3 times 5 plus 10 equal to 5. Uh, the radicand is equal to 25. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 10 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5, so that one works. When I check x equals negative 2, I get the square root of 3 times negative 2 plus 10 equals negative 2. Uh, here the radicand is 4. The square root of 4 does not equal negative 2, so we're going to have to throw out that solution as extraneous. Our solution set is simply containing 5. By the way, if we go back to the original equation before I marked it up, 3x plus 10 equals x. Um, when you're working with even roots, such as a square root, what you really want to be checking is the expression that the square root is equal to. A square root with this symbol has to be non-negative. So if I plugged in negative 2 on this right side, I can see that a square root can't equal a negative number. I could have thrown that out right away. Last one for this review. Here we're working with complex numbers. We want to multiply a complex number by itself. So that's going to be 10 plus 3i times 10 plus 3i. Multiply this out using FOIL style multiplication. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 3i, that's plus 30i. 3i times 10 is plus another 30i. And finally, 3i times 3i, that's plus 9i squared. Got a little simplifying to do. Got two like terms we can combine. 100 plus 60i. And plus 9i squared is the same as minus 9. Because, remember, i squared is the same as negative 1. And 9 times negative 1 is going to be negative 9. Finally, 100 minus 9 is 91, so we're left with 91 plus 60i. If you have any questions or comments on these problems, or similar type problems, or you want a copy of the review that this is based on and an answer key, or if you've got a request for a video you'd like me to put together for you, 
go ahead and visit the contact page at my website, georgewoodbury.com. Thanks and good luck.